and the spirit of the living God, the living one, the divine presence, is always seeking to work through our open heart and our open mind, that it may move through us, but ultimately it moves as us. We are the exclamation point of the spirit of the living God. We're not walking in a quandary, we're not walking as a question mark, except how does it get better than this? That is the question that we live in. Because whatever it is we're growing through, the infinitude of God is seeking to express itself by means of us. And so the spirit of the living God is, is working through this open-hearted space called agape, called you, called me, called we. Let us wrap our arms around ourselves and welcome us to this moment. Be very present. I just want to give a shout out to my friend Kyle Cease, who's here with us today. The tra yeah, that's Kyle. The transformational, the transformational comedian is in the house. Listen, he's going to have to leave early, so don't think I said something that made him, that offended him, <laughs> that makes him leave. He has his own presentation to do very shortly, but he stopped in to say hello. Hello, Kyle. Hey, How you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. I just want everybody to know you weren't sneaking out on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. <laughs> what would you say? You just had it with this talk. I'm through. <laughs> anyway, life is magnificent. And all this month we've been speaking about this, this, through the theme of moving from anticipation to participation. And we've come to an understanding that the anticipation of something good happening in our life is a good start. It's way better than paranoia. It's way better than walking around cultivating a thought form around worst case scenarios. It is way better than feeling that something foreboding is about to happen. It's way better than thinking, oh my God, this is so good, something bad's about to happen. No, anticipation of good is a good start. But it moves us into full participation, meaning we're not anticipants, we are participants. That the progressive universe that's birthed from the heart mind of the infinite is always working for, to reveal more and more and more of its infinite nature. Thus we can say scripturally everything is working together for our good, either for the activation of our potentiality if it's a challenge or for the absolute revelation of the glory of God that is moving through us. But there comes a moment when we are understanding that the time in which we are living right now is called the age of agency, meaning we've come out of the age of DNA, biological hereditary determinism. There used to be a thought that your heredity and your DNA determined your particular destiny, but mystics and metaphysicians have been teaching for years that that wasn't so. Now you have the quantum physics and physicists, and you have the evolutionary biologists such as Bruce Lipton, and you have the epigenetic individual telling you that all of that are starting points but not ending points in your game of life. And so we're in an age of agency where we get to determine and participate in our own unfolding, our own evolution. It's not about the external circumstance determining your evolution. It is you. We're in an age of agency. Say that. I'm in an age of agency. I'm living in an age of agency. I'm having you repeat that so it goes in your awareness more deeply and more profoundly so you don't fall prey to thinking that, oh, this and that runs in my family. Let it run away. <laughs> Let it just keep on moving. Participate in your own unfolding. Whenever you're feeling a sense of joy, a peace of love, happiness, abundance, harmonizing prosperity, creativity, whenever such a moment is rising up in you and through spiritual practice you begin to stabilize it, that is participation. You are at that second participating in the eternal. You are participating in the way it really is. You are participating in the love field, not for some future state, but that precise instant, you are a participant in the love, the peace, the joy, the harmony, and the life of the infinite. So we are, th through spiritual practice, through intentionality, through inner work, through introspection, through transpection, ultimately, we are participating in the presence of God. Say, I'm not an anticipant. I'm not an anticipant. I am a participant. 
feel that in your being and then come to an underst a deeper understanding of that as the topic smoothly shifts into the non-negotiables of living a full life and there are certain non-negotiables that you want to develop on your own that you no longer negotiate with yourself about it. It is the way that you live your life, to live a full life. What is a full life? A full life is a life that's lived always on the verge of greater growth, development, and unfoldment. You have a priority to be the next great vision and version of yourself. You're not living just to be stagnant. You're not living just uh, to remain in, in the global status quo or a personal status quo. You are living to grow. You are living to become the next great version of yourself. Why? Because you are infinite. You represent the infinitude of the spirit of the living God. So you're not just trying to hang on to yesterday. You are understanding there's something about you that is eternal and wants to come forward and express itself. So you're living on that edge. And you're, 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 uh, the full life is uh, living to activate potential. We have infinite potential. You have heard me say from time to time that your potential is way bigger than your problem. The potential within you is bigger than any problem that you may be facing. And ultimately, the problem is facing the light of your potential. It's scared of your potential because ultimately it's going to dissolve back into the native nothingness from which it has come never to exist again. So you're living to grow. You are living to activate potential. And you are living to contribute. These are some of the aspects of living a full life. In other words, as you say to the universe, and the universe hears by law what you are saying, what can I contribute to make the world a better place? What can I contribute to add more love to the dynamic space in which I am living? How can I contribute the universe will take that declaration and that decree and that question and begin to answer it in multiple ways. It will assist you in the activation of your potential. It will, it, it will assist you in you becoming available to the next great step in your own unfolding. How can I contribute? Now, why is this important? Because so many people have gotten caught uh, uh, by the downward spiraling of, of thought of materialism and getting and gaining in, in such a way that they're living from a deficit consciousness. How am I going to get this? How am I going to get that? How am I going to stockpile this? Instead of how am I going to contribute? When there is a contribution, you're in the flow of life. You're in the flow of joy. And yes, the added things do happen in your life. Uh, harmonizing prosperity shows up. Opportunities show up. Possibilities reveal themselves. Absolutely. But you're not living to get. You are living to let. To let your light so shine before men and women, them and they. they are, always we identify ourselves that when they see you, when they feel you, when they hear about you, they're seeing and feeling and hearing the presence that is never an absence, that wants to know itself as your very life and being. And so in terms of non-negotiability, I like that. Is that a word? It is now. And so in terms of that, you are saying in substance, in your, in your fulfilling life, I am here to make a contribution. Now, here's some steps, and I'm kind of catching them even as I'm listening right now, to, to your non, uh, the non-negotiables in your life. One, or, or I think I already did 10 of them, but anyway. <laughs> You must never allow anyone else to determine the quality of your inner life. Amen. You hear that? Yes. When you allow someone else to determine the quality of your inner life, you are handing over the keys to them for your destiny. Yes. If they can determine your mood, if they can get you angry, if they can move you off center and move you out of your equilibrium, they are in control. You've just thrown the keys to them and said, drive me crazy. <laughs> Take over my destiny. 
And so you have to come to an understanding that no one is to have dominion over the quality of your inner life. This is why you go into deep introspection in terms of your meditation, in terms of your affirmative prayer, so that you become absolutely available to the spaciousness of your being that becomes, and I'm not talking about your body temple, I'm talking about your consciousness. There becomes so much spaciousness there that individuals can shoot at you and everything just passes through because you're not there because you are more invisible than the air, except in Los Angeles, you can see the air sometimes. You're more invisible than the air. You are an indivisible, invisible to the sensorium presence, and you're holding fast to that awareness. Do not give a crazy person the keys to your life. Do not let anyone determine the quality of your inner life. Now, this is also mm, on a global scale. Understand this. If an individual is a hater, if they're a bigot, a racist, homophobe, if in fact they are so identified with some little identification of their lives, Republican, Democrat, whatever, black, white, if they're so identified with that and they hate someone else who's not in alignment with that, they are also under the control of, of, of uh, the pseudo powers that would love for us to be divided. They would love for us to be divided so we could be controlled. So if an individual is a hater, they are under control. Someone is determining and curating their reality. No one is born a hater. No one is born so identified with the little, small, temporary identities that they will go to war and fight for, I'm talking about verbal fights as well, for that small identity. They are, they think, they think and believe that they are determining their own thoughts but if they are a hater, they are not. They are hypnotized by a deep sense of separation. Never allow anyone to determine the quality of your inner life, individually and collectively. And so individuals that are listening, you just examine yourself and see where you've drawn a line in the sand and you, you don't like those people. <laughs> Wherever that line has been drawn, you are being controlled by an external force because your internal power says love. Your internal power says we're one. Your, inter your internal perspective is, is saying we're living on a round globe. There can be no sides. Your internal power, when you touch that, you begin to live more non-judgmentally. You don't have to agree with everybody. I'm not saying that. You, you might not be in alignment vibrationally with everybody's particular, particular opinion. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, if you fall and pray to hate, Racism, bigotry, if you fall and pray to, I'm right and they're wrong and I don't like them because of it, someone's controlling your mind because your spirit is free. Your higher self is free, you see. Non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Do not allow anyone or any force or any agency or any government to determine the quality of your inner life. You stand in an awareness of the presence that is never an absence. And you begin to see that the enemy is within your own household, in your own perception. You begin to clear it up, and you become a blessing. Non-negotiable, make your word your lover. Make your word your lover. When you're about to speak, caress it. Love the words that are about to come out of your mouth. Are they healing? Are they uplifting? Are they encouraging? Are they inspiring? Are they beautiful? Make your word your lover so that it is coming out of your mouth. mouth it it kind of creates a vibration of togetherness and oneness. Love and let the word be your lover so close to your heart and soul it becomes life transforming even your silence begins to carry that frequency non-negotiable thought no more a little god over there there's a little bit oh, it's a little bit of god over there uh-huh uh -huh. there's a little god here no 
non-negotiable presence. The full presence of God is here now. There is no little God over there, and he's got a little God, and she's got a little. No, 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 no. Oh, he's got a little piece over there. No, 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 no. This presence is omni. That means the full of it is everywhere. Now, the surface mind can't get that. Because it's going to bump up against all of your knots. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Untie those knots and begin to be aware that you're building your own ceiling, preventing you from rising into the awareness that all of the presence is right here. The surface mind can't grasp that. It has too many knots. But as you begin to cultivate your own inner awareness, of the presence, it begins to take over. And then you come into the non-negotiable of having a radical trust in the invisible presence. Radical trust. I'm talking about not, not the trust in your figuring out mind. Not the trust in your small self, the self that's developed, the personality that's, that, that was created by time. We, have per, we all have beautiful, wonderful personalities and sometimes not so wonderful. They've emerged out of time, but there's something about you that is timeless. You begin to have a supernal and supreme confidence in this presence. And you're able to walk with a degree of confidence, not that you have to have mental might and power to make something happen. Not that you have to figure everything out, but you have a confidence. And this confidence becomes a, a vibrational alignment with the way things are. And lo and behold, miracles take place. Grace reveals itself in your life. I was thinking about, earlier I was having a conversation with Niall yesterday. I was thinking about, I was, I was young, wild, crazy, Fearless. I still am, but it's different now because those days I was fearless about everything and I would do things that were a little, you know, weird, a little off the beaten path, as my daughter knows. <laughs> and I can remember, I'm just, just full of confidence. Wow. And I remember me and my friend got arrested in Mexico. We were in jail. We gotten caught. A couple of hundred pounds of marijuana, money. And we were sitting in jail. And all of a sudden, I won't call the other individual's name because he may not want me to talk about him, but <laughs> he picked the lock. But we, we, we were just so brilliant with confidence. And we just walked out of jail, crossed the border, and came back to the United States. Now, <laughs> I'm just into a stage of my life right now. I'm just revealing everything. So listen, here's the deal. If you want to have, I don't do crazy things anymore. Well, people may think it's crazy, but... Anyway, that kind of confidence, you develop this. You do a testimony trek through your awareness. And you notice all the places in your life where your own might and power didn't get you out of trouble. Your own figuring out mind. Your back was against the wall. But through some kind of grace, some kind of expanded awareness, everything turned out okay. You just do a transformational trek, a testimonial trek, and you begin to curate the feeling of that grace, the feeling of that miracle, the feeling of that. And see, Kyle's leaving right now. He, <laughs> he, actually, liked what I, he actually liked what I was saying. Right at the prison point, I took off. <laughs> Prism. It was prism. <laughs> anyway, you cultivate that dynamic. And you let that, you start to stabilize that dynamic. And you realize it's a trust in the invisible. It's a trust in the ineffable. It's a trust in the presence. You can say it's a trust in God. It's a radical trust that begins to go beyond your personality construct, beyond your, your human skills, beyond what you think you can do, you walk with the radical trust by curating, go, taking a, a testimonial trek through your life, seeing all the places where your might and power did not make something happen, but something dawned upon your awareness. Something pulled you to another level of experience, and then let that slowly, incrementally become a baseline of 
confidence and trust. And then you walk. This is your, your, this is your, you're having a confidence in your large self, not small self. You're having a confidence in your large self, and you walk with that dynamic. Now, if you walk with that dynamic, the stuff that you're going through that's keeping you up at night, the stuff that is worrying you, it will start to bump up against this confidence. Not in your little self, not in your skills. Even though the confidence and the love of God will work through your skills, God will work through an open heart. God, it will work through the ways that you've developed yourself. God will work through an open mind. It will work through it, but the vibration itself will allow you to curate knowledge transformational knowledge and inspiration and guidance from the realm of the unknown, from where you have never gone before in your personality. You will live not with a worst case scenario repeating itself over and over and over again, condensing itself into your emotional body and all of the tonic, toxic chemicals that flow through the body based on that condensing and constantly re-experiencing that which might never happen even though you're worried about it. You curate from the unknown. It's unknown to the ego. And you begin to live in this dynamic expansion of confidence and trust in life. Say, I trust life. I trust trust God. I I trust love. I I trust peace. Oh, I just trust my higher self. self. You start to live in this dynamic. And then that vibrational frequency becomes like a signal that's answered by law. You become paramagnetic for good that you don't even know exists yet. You don't even know it exists yet. When I was in uh, Boulder, Colorado a few weeks ago doing Your Destiny Awaits You two-day intensive while I was waiting to go on stage, I just happened to pick up their bulletin, not their bulletin, but their program about me and what I was going to present for the next couple of days. I hadn't read it before I got there, and I read it, and I read my bio. And as I was reading my bio, which was accurate, those things on the bio, at a certain point in my life, they didn't exist and they weren't, they were in the unknown. I didn't even, some of the things that, I didn't even, it wasn't even a part of my possibility or, or thought. I, would, I wish, I, you know, one day I want to meet Nelson Mandela. I want to work with the Dalai Lama. I want to speak at the United Nations or whatever. It wasn't even a part of that. All those things were a part of my unknown at the time. They're now a part of what is called the bio. There is stuff around you right now, just like the angelic kingdom is around you, your ancestors are around you right now. God is all around you, creating you, loving you, wanting to be more of you, and wanting to know itself as you. All of that is all around you right now. It's waiting for a vibrational match, a dynamic, dynamic connection of alignment, and the cultivation of a total and radical trust in the presence and a willingness to feel, to go on a testimonial trek so you had the feeling. So it becomes a willingness to live in the uncharted territory, the unknown. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be good because I'm participating in the feeling tone of the good now. I'm not waiting until the good manifest, I am participating in the feeling tone of the miraculous now. And then I'm shocked and surprised about how it clothes itself. Hear what has been said. We're living in an age of agency. Mystics, metaphysicians have known about this for years upon years upon years. Now, it is scientifically proven by evolutionary biologists and epigeneticists that your consciousness 
your consciousness, your dominant thought, your expanding perception determines the chemicals in your body, activates DNA, which are starting points. Conditions and circumstances don't determine your destiny. They can activate potential, yes, but it is you in your dynamic willingness to participate in the feeling tone of that which is magnificent even before it shows up. Remember, you may look out into the world for evidence before you take a move. No, no. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Because the absence, because the presence is never an absence. It is here even though you can't see it. But then if you start to curate the feeling tone of all is well and going into the unknown, evidence will begin to show up. It'll show up. Why? Because you're looking for it. And when you're looking for it, you're creating it. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Transformational trek, testimonial trek into miracles that have happened in your life. Cultivate the feeling of that. Never allow anyone to determine the quality of your inner life. The whole world that we see, not the world that I live in, but the world that I see curating on the news is a misuse of imaginational faculties, having people move into polarization with each other, and they actually believe that that's their own thought. No. God's thought is that we are one. God's thought is that we are lovers of each other. Every other thought is demonic, separated from the presence. Non-negotiable. That no one determined the quality of your inner life. Your inner life is bright and full of light and beauty. You may not know this, but you love everybody. Your soul loves the people you don't even like. <laughs> I remember one time I was in my living room having a workshop, and, and I could these two individuals were kind of at odds with each other, and I could see their higher self laughing at them. It was like, <laughs> they don't even know they're in love. But they don't, their, their vision was so narrow. You have to develop some non-negotiables in your life. Basic, don't leave home without it. Prayer and meditation. Inner shower, don't do it. It's crazy. The thought forms that, that are running amok through your media, not mine, are crazy. My media is take back your mind. <laughs> it's, trying to, it's trying to bring you back to sanity, you see. <laughs> Non-negotiable. There's not a little God over there and a little God over there. And God. No, the fullness of God is everywhere. You curate this through prayer and meditation. Non-negotiable. Make your word your lover. Just however that falls upon your awareness, consider that as you're about to speak to anyone. And if it's not love, sometimes you just want to just be quiet until you can cultivate a higher understanding and a higher awareness of the presence that's never an absence. Oh, my God. I think that's it. Kyle, you can come back now. <laughs> I want you to take a breath with me here. Release. Another breath. Release. Breath. Sustain it at the apex. Sustain the breath right there. But feel a moment of your life where a way was made out of no way. Just, just let whatever comes to your heart, feel the feeling of that miracle. 
Maybe it was a too good to be true moment and you, you couldn't believe it, but it was happening. Feel that re- release. <sighs> Let this be the starting point of our prayer moment. We're starting with the awareness that it's already done. We're starting in the awareness of a testimonial trek. It's leading us into fearless living of the unknown. More good than we could possibly imagine. More good than we've ever experienced. More good than we've ever realized before. It's all all here now. We're just widening our perceptual windows and cleaning our perceptual windows that we may see differently. Oh, my God. Such gratitude. Such thanksgiving. Such dynamic appreciation. Such clarity called recognition. Oh, I see God through the same eye that God sees me, says Meister Eckhart. That's oneness. That's unity. That's I am that which thou art. Thou art that which I am. Connection before correction. You connect. And then you're guided into right action. And there will be action. There will be steps taken. But it's from the expanded awareness. Oh, my God. It is from this awareness of absolute truth and the truth of the absolute that I have the privilege and the honor to speak the word this morning. And my word is my lover. I love. Well-being, wealth, strength, vitality, vigor, creativity, flexibility. Oh, my joy, my joy, my joy. The word is spoken. And I speak it for each of us with the realization that there's only one of us here. One life, one power, one presence, one love, one joy. Freed up. Oh, what? Oh. Oh. Only freed people can love. I'm hearing it like you. You have to be free. If you're unfree, it's love. But it has a shadow of somebody. It's got to make me happy. You gotta manipulate whatever. But if you're free, you can truly love. Mm, okay. That came in. That came in. It, I liked it. But I just had to, had to say it. You know what it reminded me of? <laughs> I was sitting with Michael Jackson one day. We were having a moment of prayer. In the middle of praying, he jumped up and started dancing. And he sat back down and he said, Michael, the dance move came through me and I had to jump up and do it before I forgot it. That just came through me right there, so I had to say it so I could come back to it and dive into it later. The word is spoken that our life being the life of God is activated right now. Oh, just say out loud with me right now. My life is the life of God. All of my needs are met. Everything is working together for my good. My body temple can heal anything. My mental body is clear. My emotional body is 
pure. My body of affairs reveal order. I now speak the word into this sublime space right now, this fertile soil of receptivity, knowing that divine and compelling right action is revealing itself through all of these beings all around the globe. And together, we're seeing a whole brand new world of possibility, a world of love and of beauty. Oh, we're, we're coming into sanity. Sanity and enlightenment mean the same thing. Sanity and enlightenment mean the same thing. We come out of the insanity sanity of war. We come out of the insanity of greed and gluttony. We've come out of the insanity of unforgiveness and resentment. We become sane beings, connected, never rejected nor neglected by the presence. We live in these as Thurman would call it, the high resolve. We live right here. Come into the upper room with me. Come! Say, give yourself permission to come on up. Let all opinions fall to the wayside and say in substance in your own awareness, all that I see is the presence of God reflecting back to me. Mm, mm, mm. Woo! Supreme confidence in presence. Supreme trust in the presence. Love God. Mm. Jamie, help him. Help him feel that. In my eyes, in my mind, in my heart and soul, in my life, I have been searching for something, but you, my dream. Oh, you're perfect, you're golden, you're light, you're Perfect, you're golden, you're my light, my love. When I breathe, oh, when I swallow, caress, I feel when I listen. The most beautiful music out of nowhere. Oh, you're perfect. You're golden. You're the light of my life. You're my love from forever. In your reflection, I. Perfect. So I'll keep looking at you to keep witnessing my perfection, Lord, in you as me. Oh, I died, I died, I died. And all the angels sing Turn within and feel the fountain of perfection in the midst of your being overflowing the banks of your present paradigm that you are becoming more never less than your true self feel into that as we 
Allow for our consciousness to be a balm in Gilead, to be a, a healing presence for these individuals on our prayer ministry that have, people have called into our prayer ministry and people that have asked to be publicly acknowledged. 